We'll be looking at enzyme classification. Now we have different types of enzymes catalyzing different reactions. But enzymes can be classified into different classes based on the type of reactions they catalyze. Now based on the reactions they catalyze, enzymes can be classified into six broad categories. We have a seven to one now, but I'll talk about the six main types. And the six main uh, classifications of enzymes based on the reaction they catalyze is summarized as Oatly. O T H L I L Oatly. Where O is oxidoreductases, C is transferases, H is hydrolysis, L lyases, I isomerases, and L ligases or ligases. Good. Let's start from the first one, oxidoreductase. First, in biochemistry, any word you see ending with A's. A S E. Just know that thing is what? An enzyme. If it's ending with AS, you just know it's what? An enzyme. All right. So that being said, oxidoreductases are enzymes that catalyze what? Oxidation, reduction, reactions. Right? So oxidoreductases are enzymes that catalyze redox reactions. Remember, redox. Redox. Reduction, oxidation, reaction. Right? So they catalyze oxidation reduction reaction. And you agree with me that oxidation is addition of what? Oxygen and remember of what? Hydrogen. Why reduction is addition of what? Hydrogen and remover of what? Oxygen. So enzymes that can add or remove oxygen or hydrogen, they are called oxidoreductases. That class of enzyme is this. And they are number one in the category. Please, this thing is arranged as it is. This is always number one. This is number two. This is number three. This is number four. Because in enzyme nomenclature, when we start the naming of enzyme using the EC number, the EC number has four digits. EC number has four digits. Enzyme commission number has four digits. And the class of the enzyme is always number one. So if you are, if you are giving something like this, EC, then they say one. Then point eleven point any other thing. The first thing you should look at this first number represents the class of the enzyme. So if it is number one, you know the enzyme is what oxidoreductase. If what is here is two, you know it's what transferases. This first number, as we go on, we we'll see what the other numbers represent. If here is three, you know it's what hydrolysis. If it is four, lyases. Five, isomerases. Six. So always note, as it is, Oatly, Oatly, number one is oxidoreductase. Now, examples of oxidoreductase are dehydrogenases. D, the prefix D means what? Remover, right? Dehydrogenase means remover of what? Dehydrogenase, remover of hydrogen. Lactate dehydrogenase, an enzyme that removes hydrogen from lactates. Removal of hydrogen is it oxidation or reduction? Or oxidation, right? Good. Lactate dehydrogenase. As we go on, you see that it, it converts lactate to pyruvate by oxidation reaction. But well, that's not your business so now. Now, oxi oxidases. What do they do? They add what? Oxygen, right? Example, xanthine oxidase. Reductases. What do they do? They catalyze reduction reaction, right? By adding what? Hydrogen or removing what? Oxygen. So these are oxidoreductases, the first class of enzyme. The second class of enzyme we have here is transferases. Transferases, they transfer a specific group other than hydrogen. So they transfer a specific group from one substrate to another. Example is kinase. Please let me give you this treat. Anytime you see a name of enzyme ending with kinase, just know that that enzyme is transferring phosphate group. It's transferring phosphate group. Anytime you see an enzyme ending with kinase, just know it's transferring what? Phosphate group. Take for example, hexokinase. As you hear kinase, you know it's transferring phosphate group, right? Is it not? Now, it, now it, see the reaction is catalyzed. Glucose to what? Glucose C-so-C. 
That is what this thing is catalyzing, right? Now, as you say glucose, how many phosphate did you pronounce? As you say glucose, how many phosphate did you pronounce? No phosphate, right? But glucose is phosphate. How many phosphate did you pronounce? One, right? One phosphate, and the phosphate is on position what? Six. Glucose is phosphate means the phosphate group is on position six. But see one phosphate. But in biochemistry or biology, we don't do magic. Phosphate was not here. Now phosphate is here. Where did we get the phosphate from? ATP. ATP is what? Adenosine triphosphate, right? How many phosphate groups do we have in ATP? So if we transform one phosphate group to position 6 of glucose, to form glucose 6 phosphate, how many phosphate group is left? So we'll be left with adenosine diphosphate, right? So hexokinase transfers one phosphate group from ATP to glucose to form glucose 6 phosphate. So anytime you have kinase, just know that it is transferring what? Phosphate group. Enzyme transferring phosphate group. So it falls under transferases. Amino transferases. They transfer what? Amino group. They are involved in transamination. They transfer amino group. If you don't call them amino transferases, you call them what? Transaminases. If you don't call them amino transferases, you call them transaminases. Alright, so that's that. Hydrolysis. They catalyze what? Cleavage of bonds, right? Using water. Hydrolytic cleavage of bond. You are using water to break a bond. That is hydrolysis, right? You use water to split a bond. If you use water to split a bond, take for example, you have something like this. Let's say you have something like this. And you're using water to split this bond, this double bond. It means hydrogen will add up one side, OH will add up one side, right? So hydrogen can add up here, OH can add up here. Is it not? You've broken one bond. You've broken one bond. All right. And where hydrogen will add? You remember Markovnikov rule and anti Markovnikov rule? You remember? Uh -huh. Say, so give hydrogen. In Markovnikov rule, you give hydrogen to the carbon that have more hydrogen, right? So, more, how the Bible put it? Him that have much, more is given, Abi. Uh -huh. Then, anti Markovnikov is in the presence of peroxide. And you remember your chemistry? You did not pay me for that one. All right, so hydrolysis, you're using water to split a bond. Example, peptidesis. What kind of bond are you breaking here? Peptide bonds, right? And you know peptide bonds are formed between what? Peptide bonds are formed between what? Amino acids, right? Glycosidases. You are breaking what? Which type of bond? Glycosidic bonds, right? And glycosidic bonds are formed between what? Sugar units, right? Good. Now, lysis. To lyse means to what? Break, right? Now, lysis, you are also breaking bond, but you are not using water to break the bond. If you are using water to break the bond, that is what? Hydrolysis. Now, most of the lysis work through elimination reaction. Now, lysis. Examples of lysis are adolis. Adolis. Adolis catalyzes the cleavage of, uh, of a substrate we call 13 bisosoglycerate you see that in the glycolytic pathway. But it breaks 1,3-bisosoglycerate into two substances. Glycerate 3-phosphate and dihydroxyacetone phosphate. For now, leave that apart. So, adolysis, they break down bond. Decarboxylases, they break down what? Carboxylic acid, right? Good. Now, isomerases, they catalyze intramolecular rearrangements. They catalyze isomerization reaction. For example, epimeresis. What are epimers? Epimers, they differ at where? Only one position, right? Anomers, they differ only in position one. Anomeric carbon is carbon one now. Looking at me as if you know your chemist. <laughs> Mutases, they are involved in moving substances in a single molecule. Take for example, if I have something like glucose 6 sulfate. And it is converted to glucose 1 phosphate. You notice that here, the phosphate group is on carbon what? 6, right? 
but we've moved the fossil group from carbon six to carbon what one is this is this a kinase is this a react is this reaction catalyzed by kinase no we are the fossil group is moved between the same molecule right from carbon six to carbon one if it was kinase kinase we carry the fossil group from this molecule and give it go and give it to another molecule but now any enzyme that catalyzes the movement of the particular group within the same molecule is called a mutase. Mutase is moving it from one position to another position. So if you are to name this enzyme, what will you call this enzyme? Mutase is a right? phosphoglucomutase because it's moving phosphate group from position six to position one. So basically, what you are to know at this stage is isomerization isomerases catalyze isomerization reactions right now ligases to ligate means to do what to join together right is it not to ligate means to join together ligases they catalyze the joining of two substances together they ligate they join lyase they break ligase they join now ligases carboxylases works in the opposite direction as the carboxylates this one breaks carboxylic acid. This one forms carboxylic acid. Synthesis or synthesis. They are involved in synthesis, synthesizing, joining together. DNA ligases. They are involved in joining DNA molecules together to form a polymer of it. So basically, what you have to know from this is the classes of enzyme based on the type of reaction they catalyze is classified into Oatly. And it is at its seat as it is. O is number one, number two, number three, number four, number five, and number six. You don't change them. If you bring this one first, it's wrong. And please take notes. The fourth one here is lyase. Oh, don't confuse lyase and ligase. Ligase is the last one because they are both L. Lyase is fourth. Ligase is last. All right. So basically, that's it. Any question? No question.